And let's start, of course, with Anoisa Bush InBev, the world's largest. Consolidated its own brands, which of course were Brazilian as well as American, things like Corona and Stella Artois, Budweiser, Bex, and then the Brazilian beers like Brahma and Antarctica and so on. And then of course bought SAB Miller last year. It's in the process of offloading some stuff, chowing its way through a gargantuan amount of debt, but getting some of that back through sales. $179.2 billion, price earnings ratio of 45. I guess that's a difficult number to arrive at, dividend yield of 3.2. Let's go straight to the share price because what that will show is that BUD, sh share code BUD in New York, has had a nasty fall since the deal closed. What's that about? Yeah, uh, what you're seeing here is if you look at where they derive the great bulk of the earnings in the U.S. and Brazil particularly, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking prior to the big amalgamation of SAB, um, you see, particularly in Brazil, major, major problems there because that company country is in deep, deep recession. Yep. So uh, top line growth really not looking very, very good at all, coupled with the fact that uh, there was the, the realization by, by some analysts belatedly that, you know, it's going to take a long time yeah. for AB InBev to absorb this gargantuan um, uh, acquisition that's made with, with SAB Miller. Also, right at the end, there was a bit of talk about how they had to up the price and how they'd lost money on like a currency hedge that they'd put in place. They were never very open about that. But as you say, it was a combination of those issues, a bit of a startling realization about earnings and then worry about the debt levels. But like we said, they're offloading certain things to Asahi. They got some of it from a regulatory point of view. They had to get rid of some U.S. assets yes. on the Miller side. So yes. that's going to reduce the debt burden. So I guess the real question is, is it hot or not now? Do you think it's hot or not in the future? Is it going to be a good one for people to buy and hold? Because you can buy them on our local market. No, you're quite right. And I think I have to answer this in two ways, Paul. I think short term, I think uh, now it's becoming obvious that the rate at which they're managing to improve the, the cost reduction situation is actually better than most people thought. Okay. So I think that big slump that we saw there in the share price graph was probably unjustified. So there from, from a short term perspective, I think there's potential for this one to move up fairly rapidly to get close to where it was uh, a, a few months back. 136, where it's currently trading 105. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's, there's probably some good upside potential there. Longer term, I'm not so optimistic in this one. This is a what I would call a glorified private equity company. It's the Brazilians, you mean? That's yeah, the their Brazilians. Yes, whole yes, yes, reason for yes, being. Exactly. It's, uh, it's directed effectively by a company called 3G, a private, e private equity yep. company. A guy called J Jorge Paulo Lehmann. Mm -hmm. Uh, who's got close links to Warren Buffett, mm -hmm. and they've effectively run out of major acquisitions now with SAB. Heineken's not going to be sold. Uh, Carlsberg probably isn't going to be sold. So you're looking, where's the next uh, growth as yeah. far as acquisitions are concerned? Yeah. Answer in the short term is there isn't one. Yeah, because this deal was big enough as it is, yeah. I and mean, the regulatory yeah. push to get this one done was enormous. Precisely. What about the talk that they could go and do a Coca-Cola or similar food or beverage related acquisition, maybe? Coca-Cola is approximately the same size as AB InBev, mm. uh, so that wouldn't be an acquisition, that would be a genuine merger, and that's mm. not in, in their DNA. They don't mm. understand that, frankly. So you think that's unlikely? So I think it's extremely unlikely. There may be some possibilities. Bear in mind that Buffett, you know, is uh, a big Involved supporter of, uh, of yeah, yeah, precisely. So, I mean, wh while that talk keeps bubbling along, it'll, it'll, it'll all be grist to the mill, but I, I think it's unlikely. Okay, so we're out of time. So you're giving a bit of a nuanced response there. Right now, though, you think it's hot. People should buy it with a potential to rebound? Yes, I think potentially in the short term, it look, looks good. Longer term, I'm not so enthusiastic about it. But so the voice there of caution would be buy it potentially now for a bounce, but don't be too greedy. Precisely. Okay, it's a little bit noisy for me. I'm going to go with not hot on that.